says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Verse 16 of Colossians says, 3 says, let the word, say let the word, let the word. say let the word, let the word of Christ, Christ dwell, dwell in you richly, richly. There's a key there, richly. That means that the word of God is on people, but it's poorly. It's not enough. And he says, call you into the rich places for your wealth transfer, for your wealth play, wealth place to create things, to invent things, for enlargement, for expansion. But there's something lacking. You have the word in you and it's weak. It's not enough. He says, I'm calling to a deeper place, a higher place. And we sing the song all the time. We'll know how high, how deep your love. You've got to go higher. You've got to go deeper. You're going to search deeper within. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Colossians says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And that's what we use to teach and admonish one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So when we're singing, we're not only glorifying God, but we're teaching others that I've got something inside of me. You hear my praise, you see my praise, but my praise springs forth from a richness, a well of living water. My praise ignites somebody else. You teach somebody else by your worship how to be set free. And so your worship, Shanda, the foundation of which you get your deliverance is the word of God. Hallelujah. And that's demonstrated by faith through your prayers and your worship. And God is calling the church back to that place. Hallelujah. Why spend your money on that which satisfied not? He said you must come. Hallelujah. He'll satisfy you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hearken diligently unto me and eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. You need to be rich in the word. You need to spend more time in the word. Spend more time seeking his face. And your worship will teach others. Your worship will encourage others. When you sing, chains are falling. I know chains fell today. I felt the shackles being broken over your mind because the word and the exaltation through worship, hallelujah, it pushed you into a new place. And deep is calling after deep. And God says it's time to press. It's time to press. It's time for the church to press. It's time to push forth, man. It's time to go higher. It's time to go deeper. In the name of Jesus, press means to move. To move into a position of contact with something. I said press means to move into a position or contact with something. It's time to press into the glory. Come in contact with God's Ezusa power, dunamis power that can raise the dead. Press means continuous physical force. Keep moving forward, forward. Hallelujah. Keep pressing forward. It's a continuous force. In the name, no time for slacking back, for lagging behind. In the name of Jesus, it's time to strengthen, strengthen the things that remain. Hallelujah. Strength. Hallelujah comes from the presence of God. Strength comes from the word dwelling in you richly. Hallelujah. So your praise and your worship should bring healing and deliverance to your neighbor. If your word, if the word is in you richly, hallelujah, it teaches admonishing one another in psalm, hymn, and spiritual song, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And so God is calling us to that place. Hallelujah, we're deep calling for deep, not just to the ankle, nor to the, the knee, nor to the waist, but it must cover you, it must overflow you, it must, must swallow you up, his presence, and the word must be in you so richly, it begins to give off a, a igniting of a flame, a fire around you, and that's where I desire to be, that's where I desire to live, where I'm covered with the glory, where I'm immersed in it, in it I move, let me have my being, and so I begin to teach and admonish others to do the same. I become a reflector of the fire, a reflector of the light, that everything around me must align itself in the name of Jesus. And so God is calling us to press forward. It's a continuous force, a continuous force. No need to lag behind. Keep on getting up. Keep on pushing. Seek God's face and seek it evermore. It's a clarion call. And all are welcome. 
hallelujah, for the blessing that seeking God brings, that deliverance comes through our worship. Hallelujah. Psalm 50 and verse 23 says, I also offer it praise, glorify it me. Whoso offereth praise, glorified me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, him will I show the deliverance of God. Whoso offereth praise, glorifies God. And when you order your conversation, let your life align itself with that which you're praising about. He shall show your deliverance. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Oh God, there shall be less cussing out your mouth, less swearing, hallelujah, less condemning, less fighting, hallelujah, less bickering and complaining. Let the word dwell in you richly. And that's what will flow out of you. Even when trials are surmountable, you'll know that the word is in you and your praise can release breakthrough and, uh, but because it comes off it's, spring, it's a springboard the word of God is a springboard for your worship uh, and that should release life it should teach others they should see the wisdom of God flowing out of you good God Almighty your worship should break forth uh, hallelujah and shackles must be broken uh, in Korea, and when the word of God dwells in you richly you release out of your belly unshackled praise it means that nothing can stand in your way it don't matter how long it takes to until midnight, Diana, uh, Shanda, Paul, and Silas sang. They prayed and sang praises to God. They were moved by the shackles on their feet. Uh, they weren't set back by the shackles. Uh, they say, you put me in prison, I'm still going to praise God. Uh, because there's something bigger on the inside of me. It's the word of God. Uh, I'm going to ask somebody, are you feasting on the word of God? Uh, are you really rich? Uh, because the word of God is what makes you rich. Uh, it's what brings prosperity. He told jo Joshua in Joshua 1.8, let this book of law not depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night, and therein you will have success. I'm successful. I am prosperous because I choose to live by God's word. You can measure prosperity and true success by tangible things. Only true success and prosperity is marked by your obedience to the word of God. It's the word of God in you richly. Are you meditating on it? Are you living in the word? Are you living by the word? Read Psalm 119. Read all of it this week. Meditate on it. It tells you about the precepts and the promises of God. The Lord will deliver those who praise Him and order their conversation aright. Your conversation will line up with the Word. Hallelujah. If you're truly serving God, your meditation will line up with the Word. If you're truly living by the Word, come on, somebody. This is a word to examine you. God says, it's time to press. It's it will change your conversation. You begin to see things differently. Even if you see the fire blazing, uh, the fire of persecution, the fire of tribulation, you still see that when you're going through the fire, you'll not be burned. While others wonder if you're going to make it through this trial, you know what the word says in Isaiah 43. When you're going through the fire, God says, I'll be with you. Yes. So in the negative circumstances, you can override that with the word. It's the word richly because that's what will sustain you and keep you good God Almighty it's going to turn your pain into praise because Colossians 3 give you the remedy that when the word is in you richly that the praise comes forth and it breaks shackles healing comes forth deliverance is unstoppable when the word is in you tell somebody young people get in the word young people get in the word young people read the word admonish your young people in your house and in your church the only way to maintain your deliverance is the word the Bible, the Bible tells us that and we were saying when we were in school our parents tell us our grandparents empty barrels make the most noise you don't want your praise to be just noise you want your praise to have an effect on somebody else's life it says teaching and admonishing one another with psalm, hymn, and spiritual song. Rabbi Korean, your praise releases you into the supernatural. Hey, the Korean, that not only you be blessed, but others will be blessed. Because when Paul and Silas sang praises unto God, praying and sang praises, they were set free. And those around them in the prison were loosed. And the one who had them in chains had to be delivered. He had to ask for salvation. I want your God. I want your God. So that's why I've been talking and encouraging people. Don't worry about enemies. Don't worry about it. Because the deeper you go in the word of God, the quicker you 
uh, you get closer to God, uh, the more you're going to see, even your haters going to ask, what must I do to get what you got? Uh, what must I get to get what you got? Uh, let the word, Hallelujah. while they're in prison, it was the word in Paul and Silas. It was the word that was stirred up and it became a prayer of faith. It became a praise break. Let the word dwell in you richly. I need to admonish somebody. The only way to change your circumstances is with the word of God. Hallelujah. Here there was a psychic shock. Here when I moved to Millville. Oh, 10 years ago, well, 10 years ago. No, it shut down. And when God opened my eyes and I saw that it, no, it's no longer a psychic shop on Delsi Drive. God said, prayer did that. The prayer of the saints crushed the enemy. But you got some Christian folk who used to go up there and, and, and exchange money and come to church with their demons. I know what I'm talking about. And they lose an eye because up your man touched them in their head. I know what I'm talking about some folk came to my church, went to the psychic shop. Okay, you leave my deliverance ministry and go to a psychic shop. Gonna have to shut it down. Hallelujah. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. And I tell the person if you don't get the word in you, you're gonna lose your mind. Then you're trying to rob you of your blessing, make you think on other things. To go to the tarot card, read out. To call the one eight hundred number psychic because things not falling in place. In your timing. I'm telling you God's time is the right time. And while you're waiting on God. I don't care how shackled you feel. Begin to praise God. Begin to worship God. Begin to pray without ceasing. Begin to meditate. Go deeper in the word. Tell somebody it's time to go deep, deep, deep. Deep, deep, deep. Deep, deep calling after deep. It's deep in the word. Not deep in your emotions. Not deep in garbage. Not deep in gossip. In you richly, deep not in people's business, mind your business and get deeper in the word. Your breakthrough is in the word, your breakthrough is in the word. Yeah, Katosha, your victory is in the word. I don't know what they've been telling you out there, but Colossians 3 tells you, verse 15 16, deep, rich, rich, get rich in the word. Get rich in the word. Ah, Timothy says, study to show yourself approved. Too much weak people in the church. Your prayers in your your prayers too weak. It's time to go deep. 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 I want the miracles. I want the miracles. I want the supernatural. I want unending breakthrough. I want unending favor. I got no time. No time to lose. I want more of the word. I don't mind having some friends with me. But I need more word. More revelation will come to me to live right. 